Hello and welcome to the channel. As the May 29 inauguration date get closer with each passing day, those jostling for position in the incoming administration are also getting itchy fit as they hope to get picked for plum positions. See the position that has got a lot of big weak politicians running Elter Skelter. Subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you. Tinubu battles intrigue as Masari, El Rafai, Bagudu jostle for SGF slot. This expose on the powers and influence of the Office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation OSGF will show that the office is very powerful and President-elect Bola Ahmed Sinyabu must get it right by appointing an unblemished individual and one that can be trusted. In the opaque world of Nigeria's politics, the undercurrents in the ensuing contestation for the job are already setting a tone for the type of power play that may herald the Sinyabu administration. Yet, as the president-elect grapples with the contemporary realities of the larger Nigerian space, different from tiny Lagos, there are indications that he will make a choice that will serve the eaters of decency, service, and clear-headedness. This report presents the powers of the OSGF as well as the chances of the major contenders in the unfolding power play. Sunday Vanguard was made to understand that there are three major frontrunners vying for the job of SGF, and three of them, incumbent state governors, are close to Tinyabu. First is Governor Nasir Hel Rafai of Kaduna State. The other is Governor Aminu Belo Masari of Katsina State, and there is Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu of Kebi State. Each of the contenders has played a major role in the emergence of Tinyabu, first in their individual and collective roles in the emergence of Tinubu as the whole Progressives Congress APC presidential candidate last June. Each also featured prominently during the presidential campaigns and the quantum of votes delivered during the presidential election of February 2023. There are others who are not known for now. A black horse could as well emerge. Hell Rafai Nigerians will recall the famous press conference addressed by Hel Rafai where he reaffirmed the commitment of some 13 northern governors to back the aspiration of Tinubu at the APC presidential primary. It was he who forcefully made it clear that there was a contingent moral obligation on northern leaders to ensure that power returned to the south after the eight years of President Buhari. This was at a time when there were suggestions that a section of Aso Rock presidential villa was not in support of the emergence of Tinubu as APC presidential candidate. Following up on that, El Rafai also made a frontal charge at the town hall meeting in Kaduna, where he made an open commitment to why the nut would deliver massive votes for Tinubu. In doing that, he practically demarcated the Labour Party LP and presidential candidate Peter Obi at the event. Beyond his open preachment for Tinubu, the outgoing Cardinal State Governor is credited with revamping the economy of his state as well as the revolution in infrastructure, agriculture and revenue generation, as well as the establishment of a process that reduces corruption in government dealings. Before his tour of duty in Cardinal, El Rufai, as the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT, brought zest and life back to the Abuja Master Plan. But for his insistence on getting it right, the FCT was already becoming a glorified slum by the time he became a minister. However, some people see him as a divisive element, a charge which they try to substantiate with his handling of the Southern Cardinal crisis and his alleged insensitivity to the religious and ethnic diversity of Cardinal states. El Rafai's people insist that the end justifies the means and that the man has no apologies. Masari, perhaps at further greater risk of rendering discombobulates an already mutually suspicious relationship between Government House Katsina and Asarok, Masari was one of the earliest Northern governors who did not wait for the body language of Buhari before throwing his weight behind Tinubu. His underground activism for Tinubu's emergence drew consequential flack from a section of Asarok. 
for a man who had had to endure Buhari's dollarization of appointment meant for Katsina State. The move by Masari to stick out his neck for Tinubu was considered by some as loyalty on steroids. For in Buhari's eight years, the other emirate of Katsina State, Katsina, was as good as relegated to an inconsequential sphere as Buhari favored Dara many times over, while treating Katsina Emirate as if it did not exist. Sources close to Tinubu say Masari's role in the negotiations that breathed the APC, negotiations which started in October 2010 and culminated in the formation of the party on February 6, 2013, is the stuff of a mature mind and one set to ensure that a matter reaches its logical conclusion. That role hand aimed the position of founding deputy national chairman of APC, not being a regular discussant with Tinubu. Masari, according to those close to the president-elect, endeared himself to him because of his calm, calculating disposition, different from the rambunctious dramatization of loyalty which pervades Nigeria's political sphere. Bagudu, whereas Kebi State was just a sleepy, dingy, glorified entity as one of Nigeria's 36 states, it must be placed on record that but for the emergence of Bagudu, the fortunes of Kebi may have gone from bad to worse. Said to be selfless and courageous but a quiet achiever, Bagudu is credited with giving life to Kebi State. On the economic and infrastructural front, Bagudu's tenure as helmsman will forever be remembered for first creating a fortune for the state. It is only a fortune that has been created but which may be dwindling that can't be turned around. He created. By the time he became governor, the state was as good as a wasteland, spearheading one of the earliest collaborative engagements between states in Nigeria. Bagudu pursued the establishment of a commodity value chain between Kebi and Lagos, with then-Governor Akin Wumi Ambode of Lagos. That alliance sought to ensure food security, job creation, increase in farmers' income and overall improvement in the living conditions of residents of both states through wealth creation and poverty eradication. In all of this, however, Bagudu carries a burden of smear by association. Known to be a long-term associate of the Abasha family, his name regularly comes up in discussions about how the Abashas run Nigeria and the benefits which accrued to the family. But Bagudu's people quip that there are many politicians today who were not only associates of Abasha, but who worked and were more prominent than the KB state governor. Buhari headed the Petroleum Special Task Force, PTF, under Abasha, and some prominent players in the polity today like Ambassador Baba Ghana Kingi Bay. On Chief Tom Ikimi also worked for Abasha's ministers. However, President-elect Tinubu is said to be set to pull off a joker. Whatever the joker will be, Tinubu is keeping it to his chest. In the end, he is expected to appoint a person who would help him ensure the effective coordination and monitoring of the implementation of government policies and programs. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.